Hi there, this is Barry Fox um, presenting a webinar on how to write the nonfiction book proposal. This is the nonfiction book proposal, which is a horse of a different color from the fiction book proposal. So I ghostwrite uh, nonfiction books and book proposals. So I've done this many times and I've seen the ups, I've seen the downs, I've made all the mistakes and I've done a few good things. Okay, let's jump into the nonfiction book proposal. The nonfiction book proposal is two things. First of all, it's a description of the book to be. And second, it's a suggestion of how much money the publisher stands to make if they publish your book. So it's a combination of a blueprint of the book and a financial prospectus meshed together. In the proposal, you wanna make it very clear to the literary agent and to the acquisitions editors at the publishing houses what your book is about, that it's interesting, and that it has an audience. Keep those three things in mind. Throughout the book proposal, you wanna be emphasizing what your book is about, that it's interesting, and that it has an audience. So before jumping into exactly how to do it, let's take a look at what you do with it. Now, in most cases with nonfiction books, you do not begin by writing the entire manuscript and then saying, gee, I've got this great 200 page manuscript, I'm gonna go sell it. No, instead you begin by writing the book proposal, the combination blueprint and financial perspective, prospectus. Then you approach agents and say, hey, are you interested in seeing my book proposal? If they say yes, you send it to them. If they like it, one of them will take you on as a client. Then the agent will show the proposal to the acquisitions editors at the publishing houses. So you typically write the book proposal first. Then if it's sold, then you write the book. Now, when you contact the literary agents, you're gonna query them. You're gonna ask them, hey, I've, I've got this book idea. I've written the proposal. Here's what my book is about. Here's what I'm about and so on. Are you interested in learning more? If they are, they'll ask you for the book proposal. That's why you wanna write the book proposal before approaching the agents. So if they say, yes, I'd like to see more, you have the book proposal ready. So now let's look at what does a book proposal consist of? Well, there is no standard format for writing a book proposal. No absolute one, two, three, here's how you do it. It's more like, uh, well, think about a house. There are hundreds of different styles of houses, hundreds of different ways to combine the rooms and put them together, but they all consist of pretty much the same rooms. Uh, kitchen, living room, dining room, bedrooms, bathrooms, hallways, and so on. So one architect will design it this way, one will design it this way, that way, one will make it bigger, one will make it smaller, and so on. But it's the same elements rearranged in different ways to create a house. It's the same thing with a book proposal. There are key elements that can be rearranged in different ways according to what your agent likes. But once you understand how to develop the key elements, you can rearrange them in any way you like to suit any agent you're going to approach. So here are the key elements. There's the title page with the selling sentences, the proposal table of contents, that's the table of contents for the proposal, not for the book. There's the overview, which is also called sometimes the synopsis or the introduction. There's the author section, which is sometimes called about the author or author's qualifications or biography. Then there's the competition section, which is sometimes called the competitive analysis or competing books or something like that. Then there's the marketing section, which is also called marketing and promotion. Then there's the book table of contents, which is the table of contents for the book, not the proposal, but the book, just as you see it in a book. Then there's chapter outlines or summaries, which are brief or not so brief descriptions of the chapters in the book. And finally, there are the sample chapters, one, two, maybe even three chapters, depending on the type of book uh, that you're writing. So those are the elements of the book proposal. And we'll be talking about key elements of those, key of those elements today. We're not gonna cover all of them, but Rizzi has taken my notes and they're gonna be writing a blog on this. So if there's more you wanna find out, look to the Rizzi blog in the next couple of days and you'll find more information. Okay, let's jump into the title page. The title page with selling sentences. Now, this is what a title page looks like. Here you go, you can see that. It's pretty plain and simple, clear cut. Right up here, you have the title, in this case, Diana and Dodie, a love story. Then you have the author's name, Rene Delorme. You have his qualifications, Butler to Dodie Fayid. And right down here, you have the selling sentences. That's all it is. Title, 
author, author qualifications, and selling sentences. It's clean and simple. And clean and simple is important because in a book proposal, you're not trying to be super fancy. You don't want to be sending it in on purple paper with all kinds of unicorns and, and, and confetti springing off of it. You want to show the agents and the publishers that you are professional. You understand how to write a book proposal and how to sell books. So anyway, this is the title page. So again, title, author, author's credentials, which could also be um, initials, MD, PhD, or it could be a chairman of the so-and-so company or anything like that, anything brief that explains who the author is. And then down here are the selling sentences. Now these are key. For Diana and Doty, this book, Diana and Doty, A Love Story, the selling sentences were the inside story of the romance that won the world's heart and the crash that broke it. So the selling sentences are like, they're also called the hook or the elevator pitch. There's something that grabs the attention of the reader, the agent or the publisher, and makes them say, yes, I want to read more. Selling sentences are very important. Here are the selling sentences for another book I did. This was called, Wake Up, You're Alive. And the selling sentences were an MD's prescription for healthier living through positive thinking. So look at what these selling set, this selling sentence does. First of all, it tells you what the book is. It's an MD's prescription. It tells you what you're going to get, healthier living, and it tells you how you're going to get it, positive thinking. It also tells you the author's credentials, MD's. So an MD's prescription for healthier living through positive thinking. Selling sentence that grabs the attention. It must have worked. We sold the book and can help you explain to the agent what your book is about and why it's interesting, and the agent explain to the publisher what your book is and why it's interesting. And remember, throughout the proposal, you're trying to demonstrate what your book is about, that it's interesting, and that it has an audience. We've talked about the proposal, the elements of the proposal, and the title page. Let's move on to a key element of the proposal, the synopsis, also known as the overview or the introduction. Now, this part of the book proposal is a paragraph by paragraph description of your idea or your story. It talks about the author, that's you, talks about the potential marketplace, the genre of your book, the word count, and much more. Think of it as your executive summary for the whole book. If you were to pull just one element out of the book proposal and say, this is what my book is about, this is why it's interesting, and this is why it has an audience, it would be the overview. So in your overview, just a paragraph by paragraph description. You want to mention, talk about your story or idea, but don't give a lot of details. Don't give a blow by blow description. Just cover the main points. Give the arc of the story. You want to talk about you, the author, showing why you are qualified to write this book and why you can help sell this book. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, you want to talk about timeliness of the book, if any. For example, if this book is geared to the 100th anniversary of whatever was happening 100 years ago, uh, our entry into World War I, mention that. You want to mention the methodology, if appropriate, not, not for all books, but let's say you're doing a um, memoir on uh, President Trump, and you and you alone have been granted access to his diaries. So you want to explain to the publisher in your proposal that your methodology includes reading through uh, President Trump's private diaries that no one else has access to. That would be important. So in the overview, you also want to mention the potential markets, the primary potential market, the secondary and specialty markets. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, word count and genre, any special features, uh, photos, menus, recipes, maps, quizzes, anything like that. And you want to mention your anticipated delivery date, if any. So all this is done in one big paragraph format. It could be anywhere from one to five pages depending on the agent. Some like it short, some like it long. So I always tell people, write the five page version and then skinny it down to the one page version. That'll force you to do a lot of thinking about your book, writing into five pages, then skinning it down to one page. And it will also prepare you. You're ready to talk to an agent who wants a one page overview and you're ready to approach an agent who wants a five page overview. So here's what some of the agents have said about this overview or introduction or synopsis. Bradford Literary Agency says, and I quote, in essence, this is your main selling statement. Concisely address all that is most exciting, interesting, introspective, and unique about your book. Make it clear that you are the best and most qualified person to write this wonderful and very necessary piece of nonfiction, as well as make a persuasive case for the intended market. 
and LGR Literary says, pretend this is the jacket flap copy that people will read once they see your book in the bookstores, Barnes & Noble, or whatever your bookstore is. Make it clear that someone really should want to read the book. Make it enticing. And then Bookends Literary, another agency, says, think of it as advertising. An advertisement grabs your attention because it highlights the most interesting points. That's what you want to have in your overview. Think of your overview as an advertisement for you and your book. Now, when you're writing your overview, be careful. Be careful of running on. This is a big danger. Lots of people do it because they're tempted to put every little piece of their story or idea in it. Don't do that. Just work on the story arc or the overview or the main points. Show the agents and the acquisitions editor that you understand what your story is about because you can explain it simply and briefly, and that you understand the high points. Also be aware of unrealistic statements in your overview. Don't say things like, everybody will want to read this book or guarantee two million bestseller or every TV host will be dying to interview me once this book comes out. Keep it realistic. Remember, agents and editors, they're professionals, they've been in the business, they know what's realistic, and they prefer to deal with writers and prospective writers who are also realistic and understand the business. Why don't we move on to the next element of the book proposal, and that's the potential marketplace and the competition. There are actually two elements, but I like to talk about them together because they kind of cover some of the same ideas. The potential marketplace is all the people out there who would realistically be expected to be interested in your book. And again, that does not mean everybody wants to read your book, no matter how good it is. That's unrealistic. Um, I had a huge New York Times bestseller, number one bestseller, well over a million copies sold. And most of the people in this country did not read the book, didn't even hear of the book. So you could have a huge, huge bestseller, and that doesn't mean that everybody wants to read your book. So when you look at the marketplace, you want to think about who will realistically want to read your book. And don't go for de broad demographics like all women will want to read the book or everyone who lives in a house will want to read the book. That's just not true. Think about your actual marketplace. Uh, let's say a book on heart health. Now, you might be tempted to think everybody will want to read it because everybody has a heart, so they want to know about it. But that's not the case. A lot of people don't think about their heart until something goes wrong with it. So you probably want to narrow the topic down to perhaps people who are concerned about their heart. I mean, rather, narrow not the topic, narrow the perspective marketplace down to people who are concerned about their heart or people who already have heart issues. And even them, that doesn't mean all of them will want to read it. Some just don't read. Or some may not like the approach in your book. It may be a great book on heart health, but it looks at standard medicine, which means people who like alternative medicine may not want it. Or maybe it looks at alternative medicine, and those in the other camp won't want it. So be very realistic when thinking about your potential marketplace. And don't worry if your potential marketplace is small. Uh, let's say a book on pens, for example, may have a very small marketplace, but it may be a very dedicated marketplace. So you may be able to say when you're talking about your potential markets, in your book proposal that the marketplace is only this big, but it's a very dedicated marketplace. And people who, who read books about pens tend to love these books and to buy many, many copies of the pens. So be realistic when talking about your potential marketplace. So that's the primary marketplace, the, the obvious buyers for your book. But there's also the secondary marketplace and specialty markets. Uh, the secondary marketplace is, is often not quite so obvious, but if you think it through, you can come to figure out who might also want to read your book. Let's say, for example, a uh, romantic, a romance, a World War II romance. So the obvious marketplace, the primary marketplace is genre readers, people who like to read romance. And this would probably be, you know, primarily women 50 years and up because it's a World War II romance. So that's your primary marketplace, women 50 years and up. But your secondary marketplace might consist of World War II buffs. If you have lots of great detail on fighting battles in World War II or what it's like on the World War II home front or something special about World War II above and beyond the romance. So think about who else might be interested in a secondary fashion in your book. Uh, let's say you're writing a book on Italians in California the history of Italians in California. So the primary marketplace might be Italian people who live in California. 
Uh, it might be people who are interested in ethnic groups or the way ethnic groups um, deal with prejudice in California. That might be your primary marketplace. But there may be a secondary marketplace if, for example, uh, you talk about A.P. Giannini. A.P. Giannini was an Italian Californian who founded the Bank of America. So if you have a lot of information about A.P. Giannini, there might be a secondary marketplace, a good secondary marketplace, for people interested in A.P. Giannini and the Bank of America. Uh, there's another famous Italian-American, Domenico Giardelli, who founded the Giardelli Chocolate Company. So if your book talks a lot about him, there could be a good secondary marketplace there. So after you talk about the primary marketplace and the secondary marketplace, you want to look at any specialty markets that might exist. Specialty market might be, for example, if your book has a Christian theme, it might do well in Christian bookstores. Or if your book um, is all about woodworking, it might sell well in Home Depot or other woodworking or home appliance type stores. Um, your book might sell well in museums as a specialty market or in gift shops, might sell on websites as a specialty market and so on. So think carefully about that, not just your primary marketplace, but also your secondary marketplace and your specialty, specialty marketplaces and put all those out for the uh, publisher in the book proposal. Yes, they can think through a lot of this themselves, but sometimes you know things that they don't because you're a specialist in this field. So you want to work carefully on your marketplaces. Another important element of the book proposal is the competition, the look at the competition. Uh, this section is also called competing books or competitive analysis or comparative titles or something like that. So what you want to do here is show the publisher, we'll show the agent and then the publishers, that there is a marketplace for your book because there are books kind of like your book or on the same topic already out there but that there's a special niche for your book. Your book looks at this topic in a way that others don't. You found a different twist on it, or you have different information sources, Donald Trump's diaries, or there's something different about your book. If you find out that there are no competing books, there's no book like yours, that may scare away the publishers because they may think if there are no books anything like this, it's probably because nobody wants to read a book like this. So hopefully you'll be able to find several books that are related to your book, and then you're able to show why your book is different, why your book will fit into this existing marketplace. So what you want to do is go to the bookstores, look online, find five to eight books that compete with your book, that people who buy your book might also buy. Pick good books. Don't deliberately pick poor, poor selling books to make yours look good. Pick good books describe them, and explain why your book is different. And be sure not to leave out any obvious choices, hoping the agent or editor won't see them, won't notice it. The agents and the editors do know what the competing books are. And if you don't talk about them and don't show why your book is different, they'll think you're trying to fool them and they'll pass on your proposal. And don't be, don't trash the other books. Be realistic, but just show why yours is different. Uh, Wolf Literary Agency says it this way. Do not be negative. Don't say so-and-so's book is very similar in subject, but poorly researched and boring. Remember, you may be sending in this book proposal with that bad, nasty description of the competing book to the editor who edited that book. And that editor won't like seeing the nasty description. So be fair, be honest, be realistic in your look at the competing books. So as you're doing this section, remember to say that there are no other books like this or mine leaves all of the books in the dust. Uh, don't trash other books. Don't give misleading information about the other books. Don't ignore pertinent books. And don't just rely on blockbusters that everybody else is probably mentioning. Be creative. Look for books that really compete with yours. Talk about them and show why you have that special niche about the author or the author's qualifications, sometimes called the biography. This is a part of the book proposal where you talk about yourself, the author. You want to show the publisher, the agent and the publisher, who you are, that you're qualified to write this book, and that you're qualified to sell this book. So here's what the Roger Williams Agency says about this, and I quote, this section is in the proposal solely to answer the two questions every editor thinks about when considering a submission. Should I risk my company's money on this writer? And 
what are the author's special credentials to write this book? So focus your biography on answering these two questions. Should the publisher spend their money on your book? And what are your qualifications? So you want to talk about yourself a little bit, not your personal detail. It doesn't matter if you have two dogs or two cats. You want to talk about yourself with respect to why you are qualified to write this book and how you can sell it. So you want to talk about parts of your education or your experience that make you an expert on this topic. You want to talk about your publishing history, if any. Uh, you want to talk about any books you've written or articles you've written. Even if they're not on this topic, you want to show that you're a publishing professional who really understands the business of writing. Uh, you want to talk about the number of hits you get every day on your blog or your Huffington Post uh, area. You want to talk about your social media engagement, uh, and that's engagement, not eyes. You want to talk about your existing appearances, TV shows, radio shows, lectures, webinars, etc. You want to talk about webinars you've done, articles you've done, so on, personal contacts in the media, personal contacts with VIPs in the field who can help uh, promote your book by giving you a nice uh, blog on the back of the book. You want to talk about seminars or classes you teach on the topic. Basically, you want to show that you are the go-to person in this field. That would be very impressive. Remember, this, this section, the, the author section or the author biography, is part of the overall pitch. So don't just give them a CV. Write it up in nice format, use your best writing skills, make every page in the proposal part of the presentation that you know how to write. Once you have that in place, once you've talked all about yourself, showing them why you're qualified to write this book and how you can help sell this book, you want to now move into the marketing section, which is sometimes called marketing and promotion or just promotion. You've already talked about the marketplace, so the primary, secondary, and specialty markets for your book. That's important. Now you're looking at how you can help sell the book. Ideally, you want to show the publisher that you are a book selling machine who can help them sell lots of copies and make lots of money. So if you already publish lots of books or you have lots of articles out there, or if you already have a busy TV and lecture schedule or incredible social media action, you want to mention all that. That's very impressive. Impressive. If you have it, mention it. But if you're a first time author and don't really have a great media platform, don't worry. There are still things you can talk about in this section or things you can do right now so that you can include them in the section before you send it off to the agent and to the publisher. So begin by mentioning any media platform you have. Even if it's just the fact that you teach a course on this topic at the local junior college, mention it. Meanwhile, see if you can't get yourself even on small local radio and television shows right now. Then you can put them in your book proposal. So between whatever little shows you can get now and the fact that you teach at the local JC, you already have a small media platform. Now there are ways to make your media platform even bigger. One way is to get quotes or blurbs from VIPs or other important people in the field. You can even get them before your book has been sold to a publisher. My wife, Nadine, is also a ghostwriter. She writes memoirs and business books, but she also wrote a World War II romance. Now, she's completely unknown in the World War II romance field, doesn't have any kind of media platform or speaking appearances there, so her media platform is non-existent. So what she did was she contacted the National World War II Museum in New Orleans, talked to some of the people there, and got one of the high-ranking high, high ranking VIPs there to agree to read her manuscript. He's halfway through and just emailed and said he loves it, he thinks it's great writing, it's a great story. So if he likes the second half as much as he liked the first half, Nadine will have a great blurb to go with her book proposal. And the fact that this fella is a VIP at the National World War II Museum will help impress the publishers. So you can look for quotes or blurbs right now. You can also look to get a VIP co-author. I used to do this uh, in years past. I would come up with a book idea in a field in which I was unknown. Then I would look for people in the field who have credentials who might want to write a book. And I would approach them and say, I've got this book idea. Would you like to be my co-author? Maybe first author, maybe second author. If they agreed, then I instantly borrowed their credentials and I instantly borrowed their media platform. That works very well. You can also look for corporates, uh, corporations or organizations or museums who might want to tie into your book. 
because they like the topic matter of your book, they may want to buy copies, they may want to sell it in their bookstores or on their websites, they may give you access to their mailing list, they may invite you to speak. If you can get some sort of tie-in with a corporation or a museum or a non-government organization, terrific. That can help burnish your credentials and make you a much better book selling machine. And you can put that right in your book proposal. And you never know. Uh, back in the late 1990s, my wife did a book on green tea. This is when the internet was still fairly new and we didn't realize it, but lots and lots of green tea websites wanted to mention her book on green tea on their website because they felt it would help them sell uh, green tea. They didn't sell her book on their website, but they mentioned her book and linked to it on Amazon, which was very helpful to her. So think about organizations, museums, non-government organizations, websites, any group that may want to help promote your book, help get the word out there and contact them. All right, so we've talked about lots and lots of elements of the book proposal. We haven't covered them all, but we have looked at the title page with selling sentences. We've looked at the overview. We've looked at the author, the competing books, the potential marketplace, and how to market the book. Well, I want to thank you for joining us for this seminar on writing the book proposal. I'm Barry Fox, a ghostwriter of books and book proposals. I've enjoyed speaking to you, and good luck with your books.